Hello, everybody. Let me just get the camera turned so that it's the right orientation here. All right, I think we are good. I think everybody can see everything. I can see chat. Hello, Grace, hello. It's kind of neat to see how many of you guys were already waiting <laughs> to get in here. So, so far I kind of like YouTube Live better than Instagram because you can pre-do stuff. But let me get it so I can see comments. Hey, Nancy, hey. Hopefully you're not watching this while you're working. Hello, Jennifer. All right, let me just make sure I get this pulled up so I can see everything. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay. All right, so today we are going to watercolor. Hey friends, and I did it over here on YouTube versus Instagram for a couple different reasons. One, I could go ahead and um, set it up ahead of time and that way it was all scheduled. Oh, okay, well then you should be sleeping, Nancy. Um, could set it up ahead of time and then this saves it on my channel. So I had a lot of times I'd do Instagram Lives and then it just disappears. And so people were kind of frustrated with that. So over here, it will stay up on my channel and you guys can revisit it any time, which is especially nice for a video like today where we're gonna be talking about watercolor and watercolor technique and different types of watercolors and things like that. Um, I think this will be a video you guys can come back and check out. So we are going to be doing some Bible journaling, um, but I'm going to set aside that for just a second. I'm going to talk about the watercolors. And then that way, if you guys have questions, we can answer questions about watercolors. Hello. Hello, Lenora. So many familiar faces. Thanks for coming over guys. Okay. So I got some new watercolors. Well, new and I already kind of knew about some of them, but um, I have been using these watercolors. You've seen these in a lot of my videos, uh, especially back when I was doing a lot more watercolor than I do now. Um, I linked, this is another reason I like the YouTube live is that I could go ahead and set up the description box ahead of time. So everything is linked down there for you guys already. So if you want to go pick up something or wanted to look at something in more detail, all that's linked down below the video. Um, and so this is a palette that I made myself using some Prima watercolors. I have the tutorial link down below as well. Um, this is the Decadent Pies set, Pastel Dreams, and the Tropical set, I believe. And then I just have a mix of Daniel Smith watercolors. But this is kind of what I've been using. I've been very familiar with these. I really love the quality of these watercolors. These are now in Hobby Lobby. Hey, Susan. Hey, Carol. Hey, guys. Um, these, you can find some of the sets in Hobby Lobby even now. So, um, they're kind of getting where they're easier to get a hold of. So they're more geared towards the craft community. Um, but they are labeled as a fine, fine art watercolor. I, I think that, you know, Daniel Smith is definitely better than these. Um, oh, that's lots of strong coffee. I know another friend from Germany was saying that she had to go to bed. So next time we do a live, we won't do it so late in the afternoon. I'll try to do it at a better time for everybody. Um, and so just randomly about, I don't know, now it's almost been two months ago. I feel so bad, but, uh, art philosophy and Prima marketing, they're, they're the same thing. They've gone under kind of a rebranding. So they were called Prima marketing. They are still the main company, but they have their offshoot called art philosophy, just doing the watercolors, but they reached out and asked if I'd be interested in trying out their new watercolor confetti set. And I said, absolutely. I'm all about playing with watercolors. So you may notice, let me grab another set here. The dogs think somebody's knocking and it's just me getting into a drawer. Um, you may notice that these new ones um, look very similar to the Koi watercolors. I know a lot of people have this watercolor set. This is the one that they were selling in most Lifeway stores when Lifeway was doing Bible journaling stuff. Um, so it looks very familiar and very similar. I did some swatching when I first got them. Um, and I would say that the quality is pretty much, you know, similar as well. It's just going to be which colors you're kind of more drawn to. The art philosophy set is more of your kind of trendy fashion colors as opposed to Koi, which is gonna be more of your like standard, you know, primaries and things like that. So kind of depending on what, what your jam is. Um, so there is that. So they sent me this and then they kind of surprised me and sent me two new sets of these. So this is actually how these ones 
come are in tins like this. I have reviews on my channel and I just pulled these out and put them in a container. So they sent currants and complexions. Now, I have tried a lot of watercolors in my time, um, especially on my channel. You've seen a lot of different watercolors. Uh, let's see. The Kiritake Gonzai Tombi. These are another one that I recommend. Um, these are an awesome, awesome quality uh, watercolor. Uh, I would say quality is very much similar to the Prima ones. Again, it's just going to be the colors that you want. However, these are a lot thicker of a paint, much more opaque, but they're not opaque because they're watercolor. But these, if you get too much paint build up, they do kind of get a shiny look to them, but they're nice if you want a lot of color payoff without having to really work at it. And you can replace these pans individually. You can order the colors individually. So um, you've seen those a lot on my channel, but I really keep going back and reaching for the Primas. Now I will say, the quality of the confection set. This is the new set or confetti set, sorry. Watercolor confetti set. I would say they're, they're saying that they are the same paints, but I don't think so. I think that they've added additives into these ones um, because you can even tell all I did was swatch these and you can see there's like little divots in the paint pans. I don't get that as much with these paints. I was just using these yesterday and you can see there's no divot to them. So I think because they have so many more colors and the, you know, it's a lower price point, I do think that they added fillers to these so that, you know, they could offer them at that price point. But overall, I would say that the quality is still good. Exactly. The complexion set is perfect if you're not wanting to mix to get specific skin tones, or you can use these for bases and then add, you know, a little more green if you want a little more olive or a little more pink into something. Um, so this is great. But if you're not somebody who paints people, because I don't paint people, I'm not that talented. This is great for fall as well. If you're doing a lot of, you know, leaves and fall, you know, greenery and stuff like that. This one is good for that. I also like to take these and mix these into other colors to give them a little bit more of an earthy tone. So this might be a little bit more of a specialty um, palette. This one is really, really pretty. And I've actually used this one quite a bit, but um, so here's the swatches of the confetti set. Now, the reason I am saying to recommend this for Bible journaling, so I know there's gonna be people here today that aren't just Bible journalers. Um, because it's on YouTube, I know I'm getting a lot of people from all over the place. But um, if you're traveling and doing watercolor or you're Bible journaling, this tin is great for that because you're gonna get 24 colors um, as opposed to these where you only get 12 and the packaging is much smaller, much more convenient. I mean, and this is much more convenient than even the Koi set. So great if you're on the go, you know, quite a bit or going to groups to go paint. Uh, you've got this area here that you can mix color. You can mix in here if you want to. It does come with a little mini water brush, which is really nice. So I, I am pleased. Now let me show you what I did. Um, and so I know a lot of people are coming here to watch the actual process, but I wanna kind of talk about you know, when you're using your watercolors, because I know there's a lot of Bible journalers who were never, you know, artists or crafters before they got into Bible journaling and you're getting frustrated with your pro you know, your products or you're wondering why you're, you know, you don't feel like you're getting better skill wise at things. And a big chunk of that is just playing outside of your Bible. So while I do Bible journal almost every single day, I do have a lot of time just spent playing with things and testing things out and getting a feel and getting used to the products. And so these are some of the exercises that you can do to kind of get comfortable with that. Oh, thanks, Belinda. I'm so excited to be here live. There's so many, and there's Ingrid, lots of familiar faces. Okay, so what I did was a color swatch sheet. I think that I have a video on my channel. I didn't link it down below. I can always come back and link it down below, but um, this is showing you how your colors mix. So this one here is for that confetti set. All I do is swatch the full strength color on the side and on the top. Um, some people kind of divide this and do like, you know, add more water so that this is a less pigmented swatch. And then this is like a regular full pigmented swatch. And so then you would have lighter in this top corner and darker in this top corner, if that makes sense. But basically this works just like a multiplication <laughs> table. So you're just going to come down and mix these two yellows together. You can mix this pink 
with this orange and you get this color, if that makes sense. So you're just gonna follow this down and that's gonna show you how those color mix. And so this is gonna give you, you know, basically every color that you can make with your set by just mixing two colors. And then of course you can add in, you know, more than that. But this will show you even for having really, really bright, vibrant colors, you can get some more earthy tones, which is more my vibe. <laughs> those are the ones that I like. Oh, thanks, Rocio. It was so much fun getting to showcase other artists. I hope you guys really enjoyed that. I know they had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun, like, watching my own channel. That uh, was really awesome. There was lots of views on that video, those videos that week, so that was really cool. I might make that a regular thing. We'll, we'll see. So you can see you can get some earthier tones. So I wanted to show you, in comparison to some of the other watercolors that I've shown on my channel, um, these are the Arteza tube watercolors. Uh, I do think I have a review for these. I've suggested these. They're really inexpensive. They do come in a, like tubes instead of pans, but this kind of gives you a good look at just the differences in the quality. So you can see these are just a little bit more like neon and bright where these are a little bit more toned down. These are the Illustrative Faith watercolors. They're the ones that come in those little tins that you can get from Dayspring. Um, and again, so a little bit more muted. Um, even the brights aren't nearly as bright and opaque as the um, confetti set. So that just kind of gives you a look at those if you're looking for something um, you know, to travel with. Yes, these take a ridiculous long time to put together. So you kind of have to measure out your paper you know, do some math to figure out how many squares to do. And then it literally took me three days to do this. Every night I would sit down for like a couple hours um, mixing colors. It was quite tedious. But like I said, I think I have a video showing how I did this um, and I will come back and link that down below for you guys. So let's see here. What we are gonna do today are paint some florals. Let me get this stuff out of the way for a second. Okay, let me show you what this is. Uh, oh, one hundred percent Daniel Smith crystal. Uh, if I had the money, I would be I would be collecting the Daniel Smith. I know when you're just ordering one tube at a time, they're pretty inexpensive. The ones that I have in here are the little Primatech. Um, how many is it? Six. It's like six in a box, and I want to say it was like thirty, forty, fifty dollars for those. Um, very, very, very expensive. But um, the Daniel Smith are hands down way better quality but they're also more, the colors are more pure. So if you're wanting like these pastel greens and pastel pinks, I don't think you're gonna get those as much from the Daniel Smiths. You're gonna get more of a pure color. So it just, again, depends on your preference. If you're wanting more of the trendy colors, so you're not having to special mix these, then these, you know, are nice for that. Okay, so what I have here is a little watercolor notebook. I just got this from Hobby Lobby, and this goes back to exploring and playing with your products. And this is kind of how you're gonna get better and better and better um, with whatever product, whether you're doing acrylic paints or Neo Color 2s or gelatos or watercolor, whatever it might be, sit and play a little bit. So this is just um, something that I started in the last couple months. Um, just playing with mixing colors, watching tutorials on YouTube and then trying to recreate them. I watched one that was about um, painting daisies, which is really difficult because there's a lot of white space. So you can see just even from one page to the second page, you know, getting a lot better just from practicing and playing, practicing with different leaf styles and um, going in with just flat color versus coming back in and adding details and just all of these things that you can kind of pick up um, over time and then take it into your Bible and feel a lot more confident when you're playing with your paints and understanding how they mix, especially if you're not familiar with um, color theory. So, you know, really practicing on mixing a red into your green to get a brown or to get a more earthy green or, you know, some of those things um, you can learn just by playing in something like this. So this was something I showed on my Instagram a while back. I did matching one of the 100 Days books, um, really inspired by it. So I went to my little journal and started playing, um, playing with different flower shapes and color combinations. Um, this is kind of what I did last night. This is what we're going to be doing today are some like winter florals. We're going to be kind of playing with I think a color palette kind of in here. So again, before you jump into your Bible page, getting an idea of what colors you wanna use and what shapes you wanna use and that kind of thing, you're gonna go into your Bible page and feel a lot more confident um, when you go into it. 
Um, this was something I did playing with some stamps. So I stamped these images from By the Well for God using a very, very pale ink. I think that this was um, pumice stone distress oxide. You can also use antique linen. Um, you want something that's water soluble and super, super light. And then you can paint and get this no line watercolor effect. So I'm sure you guys have seen this stamp from By the Well for God quite a bit. It has a totally different look when you stamp it in black, but when you stamp it in a light color and then go in and paint it, it looks like you just freehand painted that in. So that's a way to get that watercolor look if you're not comfortable with just freehand uh, style of painting. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. So a lot of you, so I had a poll on Instagram asking what everybody wanted to see. Um, the vast majority of you guys asked for the, um, redemption unwrapped kit, but I posted a video for that yesterday. So then everybody else was asking for watercolors. So here we are with watercolors. So that is just a look at how I'm starting to play in there. And then we can jump in and play with these. Does anybody have any questions about any of the paints that I've showed you? Um, maybe some other paints that you want to see? anything like that, any, you know, thing that we want to play with in here before we start diving into the Bible page. Did you ever find H2O, H2O color brush pens that are good? Oh no, I have not. I have not. So what she's referring to are, um, the Arteza pens. I have them right here. So I've been on the hunt for a good watercolor brush pen. You can see I have three different ones here. Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers, the uh, Mermaid Markers from Jane Davenport, and then the Arteza Real Brush Pens. The problem with these is they advertise them as like watercolor pens, but they're not. The ink that is in here is a dye-based ink. So if you're new to Bible journaling or if you're having issues finding things that are bleeding through your Bible pages, look for the word dye. If anything says it's dye-based, dye-based ink, dye-based color, it's gonna probably 100% bleed through um, your Bible pages. So no, I have yet to find a brush pen that is not bleeding through. Yeah, aren't those pretty? I love, love, love. I need to do more of this and this is kind of relaxing. It's, you know, I get a bunch of new stamps, stamp them out and just kind of play with watercoloring. Okay. Let's see about questions. Oh, yay, Linda. Well, that's a perfect one to hop into then. No, I don't typically prep my Bible pages, Belinda. I know that seems really scary and that I'm intentionally am going to do that today so that you guys can see how that works. So what she's talking about is prepping your Bible pages ahead of time um, with gesso. I know a lot of you probably already know this, but I'm going to talk as if you don't know it because um, we're over here on YouTube today. So prepping this with gesso so that watercolor doesn't um, leak through, uh, especially in the illustrating Bible, which is what I am painting in today. This Bible does not like water. <laughs> um, it plays okay. It's just not the same as other Bible pages. Um, and so I wanted to kind of show you what that looks like today. I've done comparisons on my channel in the past. Um, I know a lot of people are like diehard page preppers. I'm not about that life. So we're going to go in naked. That jar stamp, I'm sorry, I didn't link that down below. I'll come back after the live and link it down below. Um, this is from By the Well for God. Um, she has an Etsy shop. Let me write it out for you. Um, I do believe that these are sold. Thank you, Nancy. There you go. By the Well for God. It's actually the number four um, on Etsy. But I think these sets are sold out. But you can check. She's got some other great stamps over there as well. Thank you, Lenora. Thank you, thank you. Yes, by the well, forgot. Okay. So today we're going to be journaling. Um, I thought we'd go super basic and go John chapter 14, verse 6. Uh, Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And then verse 7, if you know me, you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. So I am the way, the truth, and life. That's what we're going to be journaling today because that's all it is. That's the only way to get to him is Jesus. That's it. No working harder. No <laughs> extra books. No, none of that. It's just Jesus. That's how you get there. Um, I have used watercolor ground before. Yes. And I think I actually linked it in the products down below. Um, for anybody asking about page prep, watercolor ground is kind of my preferred one. I'm going to tilt this just a little bit. Um, watercolor is my preferred 
Watercolor Ground is my preferred page prep if I'm um, playing in this Bible. Aw, thanks guys. You guys are awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna slide my Bible mat underneath there. And, okay. I went ahead and pre-cut out a little circle using some nested circle dies. Again, I forgot to link these down below because I last minute, like literally five minutes before we went to live, um, decided to do this. So I just die cut out a circle, but you could also trace it, you know, using a bowl or something like that. I know you guys are creative. Um, initially, I was going to use this as a mask and kind of do a watercolor um, wreath around it. But I think what I'm going to do is trace the circle paint my wreath, and I'm actually gonna stamp on this and then just adhere this straight down. That way, if I mess up my stamping or whatever, I can always just redo redo this. Okay, watercolor ground. Let me grab it really quick, I have it right here. Okay, so I have a, if you search Lindsay Decor watercolor ground on YouTube, it'll come up with a video where I specifically talk about this. So this is another page prep, basically. Um, you wanna look again for transparent, just like transparent gesso, transparent watercolor ground. This has a little bit of a texture. So similar to the Liquitex clear gesso, which I know everybody says they hate, but when you're watercoloring, it's actually better to have a little bit of a texture to it. It's just like watercolor paper. Watercolor paper is not super, super thin, uh, or I mean super, super smooth like cardstock. It has a little bit of a texture to it. And so the watercolor ground gives you that little bit of a texture. It is definitely less texture than Liquitex clear gesso. Um, I like to add a couple layers of this. Now the directions do say to let it air dry for 24 hours and cure before you paint on it. I'm lazy, I don't do that. I just go in and heat set it really good with my heat tool and then go in and paint and I haven't had any problems, but I'm also not doing anything fine art and that kind of thing. So I think, you know, it's okay to, to cheat that rule a little bit. The difference between this is it has a little bit of absorbency to it. So even gesso absorbs a little bit, but this will then give you kind of a layer so that the paint can absorb into that watercolor ground layer, but doesn't absorb into your paper, if that makes sense. So you're not gonna get bleed through, but you're gonna be able to layer and play with the watercolor very similar to how it is on watercolor paper. So um, I definitely, like I said, check out that video, Lindsay Decor Watercolor Ground, and it'll show you, and I even show you the differences. So I swatch out gesso, matte gel medium, watercolor ground, put paint on there and show you how the paint plays um, different. Okay, so I'm going to trace myself a little circle here to give myself a guideline so I know where to paint. And then of course I just colored all over it. So I should have flipped it over on the back side. Um, let's see, I'm thinking about getting one of these Bibles. Does it help you to remember what you study or give you a deeper understanding of the word? What has been your experience? 100% has changed my life. <laughs> um, and I'm sure a lot of the ladies on here that are Bible journalers can attest to that. So, um, it's definitely not for everybody. Not everybody's brain works that way, but it gets me excited to get into the word more often. It does help me to memorize scripture because I can mem I remember certain pictures and things and designs that I've done with certain verses. And so I just, it kind of helps with the, you know, the memory part of that. But it also just, I don't know, it just helps me, I don't know, coloring and using my hands while studying makes it stick in my brain a little bit better. There's a wide variety of Bibles. Check out my um, Bible journaling for for. Bible journaling for beginners playlist. I have one all about product, all about Bibles. Um, so definitely check that out. Yes. Great visual reminder of the scriptures, studies and lessons. So yeah, you, so like today I'm not going to take notes today. We're just going to do a big title and paint. Um, but in the past I have, you know, done a lot of notes if I'm going through a study. So it just depends on what, on what you want it for. I have a different Bible that I like take notes and stuff in. So uh, yes, I do actually, I was just thinking about ordering another interleaved Bible and using it for watercolor. I think that's what I might be doing. I do like the interleaved. 
I like this one because I can, because I like to do things a little bit more scrapbook um, and make a big mess. And so that works for me. How many Bible journalings, do, Bible or journaling Bibles do you have? I don't fill one up, Belinda. Um, I know there's been a couple ladies who have journaled like every single Bible in a page or in a, you know, every page in a Bible. I have not done that. I just go until it gets too fat. Um, I have gone through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, maybe eight that are like full and done and retired. And I've been journaling since 2015. So that's about two Bibles a year. Okay, so doo -doo -doo. let me look at my little, I already pre-mixed some of these colors, but I'll mix them again on camera so you guys can see them. I'm going to set this over here so I can look at it. I know I noticed the other day that I jumped into this one and had some empty spaces in one of my other ones because I got too excited to jump into this one. Okay, today I'm using some silver black velvet paint brushes. I talked about these briefly in a video a couple months ago. Um, and I wanted to talk about them again because I had some people asking what I was using. And so I've started linking these. I've slowly started investing in some nicer paint brushes now that I watercolor a lot more frequently. And so I love these. They are very good quality. A lot of the ladies who um, paint on YouTube use these. Um, however, I want to give you a disclaimer that they do. They are a mix of um, synthetic fibers and squirrel hair. So if that bothers you, then don't get them. <laughs> I just like to think of little naked squirrels running around and not that they kill them, but <laughs> they do work really, 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 really nice. So flip through the green Bible. Most of the green Bible is actually on my channel. Most of the, pro most of the pages in here have been posted as videos. Oh, thanks ladies. Okay. So let's mix some colors first. That's usually where I like to start. And I'm actually going to use a different brush to mix. So I like to use a different brush when I mix because this, because you're going to, you're kind of like scrubbing in the paint, scrubbing in the jar, scrubbing on the pan. And so I don't want to use my nice brushes if I'm scrubbing on things. So I'm going to use a different brush. I have two cups of water up here. One is going to be my clean water. One's going to be my dirty water. So when my brush is dirty, I wipe it in the dirty water and then dip it in the clean water to make sure it's good and clean and then come to my paints. And if I want clean water to mix in with paint, I can pull clean water from that clean water um, container. Living it. I am Lenora. I'm so sorry. I know it is horrible, but they're good quality. And I like, like, I mean, there's like millions of squirrels. I think it'll, I think it'll be okay. Okay. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of this deep blue color. And so I'm just, you know, kind of scrubbing at the color and picking up some color. I, you can work straight from the pan, but if you want consistent color and consistent consistency, <laughs> um, it's better to make yourself a little swatch. Um, are the classic Stampin' Pad water-based dye inks good for water coloring over? Okay, for stamping. So if you stamp, you want to use something that's waterproof, like VersaFine Onyx Black. Um, this is my favorite go-to archival ink. I don't love this one as much because it definitely bleeds through um, and stays on stays on ink. This one bleeds through too. And this one is kind of harsh on your stamps. So really I only use stays on if I'm stamping on acetate or fabric or something like that. So that's kind of a specialty one. But archival ink and VersaFine, this is my preferred. So you want to use something that for sure is waterproof unless you're doing that technique like I showed here you want a water-based ink like the distress oxide inks like the regular distress inks those work best for this stampin up yeah i've never tried stampin up oh good to know maybe i should try those mimic brushes so there's no more naked squirrels running around okay let's mix my green so the green is one that i kind of mixed several colors with so i started with this bright green here And really, I know that there's like a technical science to mixing colors, and sometimes I will listen to that science, and sometimes I just keep dabbing color until it's the color that I want. Okay, 
and then I'm gonna go in one, two, three, four. This one here is a little bit more of a blue green. So we kind of have like an emerald shamrock green, but I don't want it bright. I want kind of more of an earthier tones for this. Are the Stampin' Ups dye based? Okay, now to earth, make this a little bit earthy, I'm gonna go in with some red. Now I don't have like an actual red. They're all kind of a pinky red. There might be like more red in here. Yeah, let's try this. So I'm gonna pick up just a little bit of red and the, because red is opposite from green on the color wheel, this is gonna give me a little bit more of a brown tone to it. Or gray because I had that bluish color that was in there. So now we've gotta go back and fix this. Sorry, I had, sorry guys. I had do not disturb on there and then I got a call from my doctor's office. <laughs> my phone obviously knew that it, I should be pushing through for my doctor's office calling, but. Lenora stays on super hard because it's kind of a more dry ink. Okay, I need, um, so now I'm just going in and mixing a few different greens in here to get it the tone that I want. But you can see that's much earthier looking than that like emerald green. Okay, so the stays on is a much drier ink. So you might need to replace your, your ink pad or stamp in a stamp positioning tool and stamp multiple times. Yes, so she's, um, she's talking about, I have a color theory tip Tuesday. I think it's tip Tuesday all about color. And I talk about color theory, color wheel, mixing colors. It's definitely a good one to check out. Okay, so there's my green, there's my blue. And then I need, I have this kind of olivey green that I mixed last night. So I think we'll just mix a little bit more into there. I kind of go overboard, Belinda, with the amount of color that I create because I, like you said, you can see here, I have it, you know, dried out. I can just go back in with water and reactivate the paint that's on the lid right here um, and keep using it. So I'd rather have too much than not enough. But if I get not enough, I just kind of try to keep, a, you know, keep track of the colors that I've used to mix it. And then that way I can make more. It isn't going to be perfect, but that's okay. Okay, so I want this to be a little bit different of a color than I'm getting. That was not what I wanted. Let's see, kind of trial and error. That's probably closer to what I want. Okay. And then the red I have here already. I know what they were calling for. They're calling to send me my medication that I needed before I flew out that isn't gonna be here on time. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna take and make this kind of mauve -y red color. So I've got my, it's pinky red, I don't have a true red in here. But now I'm gonna add just a little bit of green to this. Um, I'm gonna pick up this kind of earthier green over here to get it to that mauve. And actually I should have used So now if it's gone too brown, then you can just add more green. So you just kind of go back and forth until you get what you wanted. And that, I totally was not paying attention and put way too much green in. I'm trying to watch comments and mix paint and... <laughs> um, so gesso and then prismic. So with... Um, Prismacolor, you do not need to gesso. I know some people have scared Bible journalers into thinking that you have to gesso everything. You do not. Bible pages are actually more durable than just regular book pages. They really can take a lot of water. Um, you'd be surprised. 
Nope, no news on the insurance dilemma, and it's just hot mess. <laughs> I'm just choosing to ignore it. Okay, I'm gonna add something in here to make it. Oh yes, you do get more vibrancy with the tr with the tooth. That's true. I think we're gonna go for that. We're just gonna call it good because I'm tired of mixing paint and you guys are probably tired of watching me mix paint. Okay. So I've got my fins here. Let's get over and give myself some room. All right, so I've got my circle. So I'm keeping in mind that I wanted to kind of paint around that circle and I'm gonna start with some of these blue flowers. And so the trick with that blue is I really want a lot of water and not as much pigment. And that's gonna give me that really pale blue. Oh, good call, Lenora. You must watch um, Sandy Allnuck because she always irons after her, <laughs> after her painting. Okay, so I'm gonna try to do this so that my hand's not in the way so that you can see. And I find, I kind of like, you can see I'm kind of scrubbing and moving my brush around to get some like irregular pieces to these um, petals so that they're not perfect. And that's gonna give you a little bit more natural of a look than just going in and you know, creating oval shapes. Yes, this large protector is amazing for this Bible. I use it a lot more than I thought that I would. Okay, so you can see that it's kind of wonky and not perfect, and that's what I'm going for. I can go back in and with not as much water, pick up darker pigment and kind of drop it towards the base here. And that's gonna give me my darker pieces at the center here. And then I'm gonna actually add gold to the center of here when we're all done. Lenore, you got a cordless iron. That is amazing. Okay, 37 minutes in. Let's hope that it isn't a one hour time limit with YouTube. I think I'm gonna flip my Bible around so that I have more space. Again, a nice thing about the Illustrating Bible <laughs> is that you can flip it. Yes, it's from Illustrated Faith and Spring, the big one. Okay, so now I want some flowers that kind of look like they're like cupped. So I'm gonna make some petals kind of here. Here. I just realized I'm not going past my line enough, but that's okay. And then, so I've got my three little pieces, and then now I'm going to kind of come in here and add some. And I promise when we start adding centers and greenery, that will look like it is supposed to. <laughs> Watercolor is one of those things that just kind of looks crazy until it doesn't look crazy anymore. Sorry, I get super like engrossed in what I'm doing and then I don't chit chat. Thanks, Lenora. I know it's so funny. Everybody was, it's, I, a lot of people were saying, so in my poll, I had a lot saying that they wanted less scrapbook and more other style. And it was funny because I know what you guys mean. You're wanting back to florals and things like that that I used to do. But 
asking me to change my style is like asking anybody else to change. Like, you wouldn't ask Beloved Society girls not to do her girls anymore <laughs> and to do realistic watercolor painting because that's not her style. She does her girls. So I just think it's funny because I know what you guys mean when you ask for that, but the scrapbooking style is what, I don't need paint in there, um, is what makes me happy right now and that I am doing a lot of because I enjoy it. And so that's why I do it. So. Aw, thanks, Shonda. It's 100% years of just practice and play. So this is going to look kind of funky, but I'm keeping in mind I don't need to waste my time painting in this circle because we're going to cover it up with that other circle. Thanks, Linda. Usually I do do what I do, but I, um, but I figured I should probably give you guys an explanation why I ignore that sometimes is because I mean ultimately it's really my journaling bibles and my experience and I just happen to turn on the camera and share it with you um and so I like doing the scrapbooky technique okay So there are some blue flowers, and then we'll go in and add the greenery. I'm just kind of softening that line. So one thing you'll find with the Illustrating Bible is you can't really go back in. Like when you're working on watercolor paper, you can go back in and lift watercolor. Um, and move it around and take it away and blend things together. You can't do that on the Illustrating Bible pages. The more you rub, it will eventually just disintegrate the page. So um, that's one downside to working on here with just bare pages, but I like to live on the wild side. Yeah, I feel like I'm way more comfortable with paper and doodads for sure, <laughs> for sure. And it's quicker. You can see this is, we're probably going to be on here for well over an hour for one page. Watercolor painting just takes much, much longer to do. Okay, so now I'm going to go in and add some of these green pieces. And this one, one reason I like these brushes is they have that kind of tapered shape. And so you can just kind of lay your brush down and create leaves really, really easily. Oh, Lenora is like out of this park, crazy, complete scene girl. Every time I see her stuff, I'm just amazed, Lenora. It's crazy. I'm trying to keep in mind where my paper is going to go. I want it to be kind of fluffy. Oh, thanks, Kat. I, I think you're right, Lenora. I think this Bible definitely is more, like better suited for um, the scrapbooky techniques which makes sense because that's more Shauna's style um so that makes sense that it would be like that I'm just gonna mix up a little bit more of this Thank you. It's definitely relaxing to do these. So I want to put in some holly berries and some other things. I'm going to go over these because my color is just slightly different. And I think with watercolor keys to remember messier looser is better and it will look like a hot mess for a long time till right up the end at the end it usually will come together and 
and I try not to worry about, you know, how certain leaves look or things like that um, until the end. super super messy but that's okay all right so I'm gonna add in some like pine tree pieces and then we can always come back in and add more of these other so this lighter color is gonna be my little pine pieces and I think I'm actually gonna go in with my size four all right does anybody have any other questions that we can chit chat about while I paint away here so with these pine ones I'm just gonna go in and draw a line or paint a line I guess and then you just add little furry pieces to it anybody else Bible journaling while they're watching that's usually what I do when there's lives on shady, shady techniques um, I would say watch card makers because card makers they do a lot of shading with like Copic I'm gonna pick up a little bit of brown um, Copic colors and stuff and they have a lot of techniques for adding um, shading to, you know, whatever side you're supposed to add it to, what colors to mix together. I don't do too much shading, um, just because I'm lazy. Watercolor shading is pretty easy. You can go back in with deeper, so more pigment, less water, and add layers once it's dry, which I'll come back in and probably do with that piece there. Um, do you ever look at which side is going to be shadowed? Yeah, so you just kind of have to pick where you want your light source to be coming from and then envision that. So let's say I want this circle to be shadowed. So if I've got my light source from here shining down on here, this would be my bright area. And then opposite of that would be my dark area. So no matter what you're playing with, you know, coloring in, if you think about that, just envision a little sun sitting in, you know, wherever you're sitting from, from the bottom right-hand corner. This is going to be your light area because it's closest to that light source. This is going to be your dark area because it's furthest away from the light source. So I don't get super, super fancy into making sure that those things are accurate <laughs> when I do it. I'm using the wrong color here. Um, I just kind of do whatever I think looks right and it's okay. That's the nice thing about working in your Bible is you really don't have to have stick to the rules. You can do what makes you happy. Okay, I'm gonna try to remix this color without messing it up too bad. Which watercolor brand for beginners, first time finger painting in first grade? Um, I honestly would say these. I think that they are very well priced. They come in a lot of different colors. The quality is nice. I say you get what you pay for. So if you go for those crummy ones from Michael's, Artist Loft ones, you're not going to be happy because you paid $8 for them. So while that's great to start with, I don't even think that they're really great to start with because they're just harder to work with. And so the techniques are harder to do because those watercolors aren't decent quality. So I would say these Prima ones are pretty good to start with. Or the, um, there's this set. Um, and it's all in like Chinese. I would just look up pretty excellent watercolors on Amazon. I think that these were like 20 bucks and you can see how many colors you get in there. Those are pretty, pretty nice to start out with. Mix a little bit of this in here. Thank you. I, it's just lots and lots and lots of practice, lots of playing around. I don't have a normal nine to five 
job. Like this is what I do all day. <laughs> so anybody, whether you play an instrument, whether you do art, whether you, you know, whatever it is, if you do it that much, eventually you just get comfortable doing it. And I still feel like there's a lot of things that I struggle with or don't feel confident with. Um, and I think we're definitely our like, like harshest critic for sure. Uh, Elizabeth, I don't love the Illustrated Faith watercolors. I feel so bad saying that and I hopefully <laughs> nobody's watching, but um, they have their place. If I am working with Illustrated Faith kits and things. It's nice that the colors are kind of designed to um, match those, but they're very, very um, transparent. Like the, they don't have much color payoff. I've noticed, like I just opened them up today before I did this just to see what they look like. And mine are um, like, separating almost like there's oil separating weird so I'm going in with a little bit of brown to come in and just add some branch to the center of these As you see I started getting where it's all kind of flat one color and I don't want that so I'm gonna come in add a little bit of this brown you can see I'm kind of skipping and then I'll come in and add another layer of green to build that up and give myself some shadowing. And I accidentally made my clean water dirty, so don't do that. <laughs> That's awesome. I, our Joann's near me is horrible. So I hardly ever go there. They don't have anything, it seems like, usually. And kind of let these cross each other and I'm getting sloppier and sloppier just because I'm trying not to have this take forever hello Robin okay let's do one more of those and then we'll add in some holly berries I have to keep looking up at the camera to see because it actually looks much better from up above <laughs> right in front of it we'll have one right here and then I feel like it needs it needs one right here somewhere I do think, Lenora, I do think that the colors have changed with Illustrated Faith a little bit, so they don't quite match those, but they do still use, like, that peachy pink color. They're like, there's a few colors in there that they do use. I just was never really happy with those watercolor, the payoff of water, of color with those watercolors. Um, I've never tried Derwent watercolor pencils or watercolors. I've only ever tried Derwent ink tense pencils. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna mix something a little bit darker and I'm being naughty and doing what I told you guys not to and using my nice brush. Uh, yes, that blue, you're talking about this one here, pretty excellent on Amazon. Like I said, I'll come back after the live and I'll, I'll plug that in there for you guys as well. They are really inexpensive and actually pretty good quality colors. And I like the container that they come in. Ink tents. I have um, a Tip Tuesday all about watercolor pencils that I think I talk about ink tents on, if I remember right. And you can see I'm mixing in these confetti colors with the other Prima watercolors. And I think that the quality is close enough that I don't notice too big of a difference. 
You see, I'm going in and making something just a little bit darker, a little bit more green to go in and add a second layer to these. And that's what's gonna take your watercolor to the next level is being patient and layering. I think that's where a lot of people get frustrated is that watercolor, like watercolor is not a quick way to do a Bible page by any means. I do have the Koi's. I've only used them a few times. Um, I think that I got my Kiritake Gonzai Tombi about the same time, and I much prefer those, so I never really use the Koi. The Koi go in my class set, and my classes use the Koi's usually. So you can see how now those look a lot different than something flat like this because I've gone in and added multiple different colors of green now at this point. And if you missed the beginning, don't worry, this will be saved on my channel and you can go back and watch the whole thing. How are we doing for time? Almost an hour, okay. So now let's go in and do our little berries. I'm gonna use a bigger brush for that. I'm gonna pick this up. So these are super easy. They're just little circles. I am gonna leave some white areas just for a highlight. And if I was working on watercolor paper, I could go back in with a clean wet brush and pick out water color, uh, pick up color to give you a highlight, but you can't do that on here. So I'm leaving myself some little white places. You're right, Lenore. There are way too many different choices. <laughs> and doing the sw swatch card really helps me see the colors that I have and like the opacity of them. So it's easier when I'm painting to grab, you know, exactly what I want. Trio right here. Yes, yeah, so I did link some watercolor brush pens down below for you guys. Um, I have used those before, actually quite a bit. They are great when you are traveling. Um, and they're helpful with some things. I find it a little bit difficult to control the flow of water with those sometimes. So I have to be really careful when I use them. A little bit more to that. Um, but they are convenient to use the watercolor brushes. What she's talking about are these. The ones I have linked down below are the Arteza water brushes. So they hold water in the barrel and then water just free flows through the brush. Um, you can see these are, there's a little bit better of a system for water control in here than say something like these. Um, the water moves much faster through. Um, it does still have like a limitator in there, but these are much easier to control. So I do travel with those. I do, they're you know quick and easy to use, but I've found that I've gotten better with a paintbrush and kind of reach for that more often. <sighs> yes, it does. See, maybe I'm feeling a little Felicity Jane. I have my December daily sitting out my desk. I was supposed to be filming a video for that today. 
um, to hopefully have posts for you guys while I'm gone, but it's not gonna happen. <laughs> I'm running out of time. We have to get up at 12.30 to be at the airport at 4.30 because it's a few hours away from us. So we've gotta go to bed at like seven o'clock tonight. So I'm running out of time. These, Ashley, are the Art Philosophy um, watercolor confections. Um, they have this set here of 24, and then they have these smaller sets. They were originally Prima Marketing um, watercolors. Okay, so I think we're getting pretty close. Let me add in some stems to my berries. So I need brown. Um, let's see, what is a scrapbooking style? So scrapbooking style is more like what you've seen from me recently that um, like using um, die cut ephemera and layering papers and fabrics and things like that. That's more of a scrapbooking style. Yes, Lenora, me too. Um, I did just see, so Lenora's talking about those little swatch cards from By the Well for God. They did just list some... Um, Help me out, Lenora. <laughs> They're the Prima Tech swatch cards. I need to order some of those when I get back because um, Prima Tech by the Prima Tech is like a specific line by Daniel Smith, and they are amazing. They are made from ground up gems and minerals and things, and they are awesome. So I'm adding a little bit of this brown to the base of the flower or the base of these berries just to kind of help that brown blend and help it look like it's holding onto that berry. I know Lenora, I, I asked Lori about that, about um, the feasibility of just selling pre-filled half pans of them. And she says, you can't do that. That Daniel Smith has like a, like a thing, like they'll sue, sue the pants off of you if you do that as a shop. So I was thinking that would be helpful because I could never use a full tube of that paint in my entire life. Um, but you can't do that. Okay, how is that looking from your guys' perspective? That looks pretty good. Um, brush pens with the paint already inside of them. No, Kim. So that is like these ones here, Kim, like Jane Davenport, Arteza brush markers. These I found all have dye ink in them. I have yet to find one that is not a dye based ink and these will bleed through your Bible pages. So I do have a couple tutorials using these and if you prep your Bible pages, you can use those, but I don't prep. Um, and so no, I had, I don't really use those that much. Um, thank you. Lenora, I won't tell anybody. She just mean like you can't post, like you couldn't have an Etsy shop where you were selling pre-filled Daniel Smith half pans. Um, I know that there was, there's a lady out there that does that and you're not supposed to, but I think between us here and the rest of the world on my YouTube, <laughs> I think if you're just doing it, you know, with a friend or something, I don't see any problem with that. So you're not going to, I'd rather see the paint used than just go to waste. Yes, so the new release from By the Will for God is coming very soon. I think pre-sale is the 20th, Lenora, right? 20, 20th or 21st? What did we do, what did we land on? Um, and yes, myself and the other team members did contribute to the By the Will for God kit that is coming out for January. Okay, I lost one of my paintbrushes. It's right here. <laughs> so this is some starry colors. Um, by Gonzai Tombi. You can get these from By the Well for God. I did not link these down below because this was a last minute decision. But I'm going to add some of this gold to the centers of my flowers and things. I am using my new phone. I'm finally figuring out, I think, how to get stuff transferred from it to my computer consistently. <laughs> and it's just, it's just getting used to. It just changes my whole like process of how I set up and how I batch work and just all the behind the scenes stuff. I just have to redo my routine.
that's a good idea crystal yeah like you and your mom you i think it's totally okay to split things uh thank you so pre-sale friday the 20th for by the wolf for god they are both called 2020 and that was not planned i think that you know when you're going into 2020 <laughs> the year and you think about the new year and vision 2020 i think it was kind of a no-brainer that that like I think you're going to see that a lot. I think you're going to see a lot of it in like planner stickers. I think you're going to see it in a lot of different products. So now you can see I add a little bit of gold to this flower. And so it looks kind of like it's cupped facing this way as opposed to being flat open. Same thing with this one. If I come in and add a little bit of gold right in here, it'll look like it's more cupped. It's not perfect. It's a little wonky, but that's okay. And this guy got really crazy. That's okay. I think I'm going to add like a little bit of gold here and there just to add some shimmer. Hello, Merry Christmas. Are we all ready? ready for Christmas. I am not. I have done literally no shopping whatsoever and I will be doing it the 23rd and 24th. <laughs> That's usually how it is every year for me. I don't know about you, but paydays don't really, you know, coordinate with Christmas very well. So, okay. I think I like that. Let me dry this really quick. We can move on to the stamping really quick and then we'll be done. So not too bad, just over an hour. I was aiming for an hour, but an hour and a half will be acceptable. <laughs> yeah, I kind of just add a little bit of interest. I'll probably add splattering of gold on here as well. You know me. Thanks. I know blue flowers are a little bit different. I was kind of trying to go for winter. Okay, I'm going to set this aside and let this kind of air dry for a minute while we stamp. Okay, so got some stamps here and I think I'm going to stamp out the way, the truth, and the life. I'm going to use these here. I don't think I linked these down below either. Guys, I really tried to like, cause I set up the live a couple days ago and I was trying to preemptively imagine what I was gonna use, but I pulled out some extra things, so. Um, so she's talking about these Amsterdam acrylic inks. I got these from Hobby Lobby, but they are super expensive from Hobby Lobby. Check out Blick, it's Dick Blick or Blick Art Supplies. I do have an affiliate link for Dick Blick actually down below this video. If you scroll down towards the bottom, there's a Dick Blick affiliate link and that's gonna be your cheapest place to get the acrylic inks. And we could have used this on that as well. That gold is really, really, really intense and pretty. Thank you. I am happy with how that came out. Lives are always like unknown. You never know how things are gonna turn out on live. <laughs> All right. Any questions while I'm getting stamping stuff ready? I haven't been to Hobby Lobby in a long time either. This is really embarrassing to say, but I feel like I got to a point where I kind of had everything that I would want, which again, sounds really excessive and extra. Just remember that I do this for my job. <laughs> um, but a lot of like specialty things, a lot of scrapbooking things that I enjoy, they don't really have so much of at Hobby Lobby, so. I don't go there as often. Yes, it is nice that you can take a coupon. Okay, this is not what I meant to do. I meant to do away with the bigger ones. I'm all distracted. I don't know about brave. Maybe it's just crazy. It's crazy to do lives. But I did, so I've been doing lives back like when Periscope was really popular in the Bible journaling world. I did several Periscopes. I think that YouTube's gonna be my favorite because I can go over an hour without it cutting me off, which you can't do on Instagram. 
are the Versa Magics like Versifying waterproof? Good. Um, yes. If you heat set them. You can use vellum for the center. I'm not going to do that for this one just because I was not mindful of how I was painting. Um, just keep in mind, vellum's kind of hard to adhere down and, you know, not be seeing adhesive. Um, and if you're stamping on vellum, you want to use stays on ink. Elizabeth, sorry, I think you asked about Advent earlier and I didn't answer you. I'm kind of doing Advent as, um, see, I wanted to do something different too. Oh, guys, I'm so distracted. Um, so my family, we're trying to read one chapter of Luke every night um, together. And... Other than that, I'm kind of jumping around between kits just because there's so many and I know you guys are going through multiples. So this is the life of a YouTuber for everybody that wishes they had my job while I love my job. <laughs> um, it's reached a point where I can no longer like just work through an entire kit and that be it. I'm working through a whole bunch all at the same time, all the time and only do partial just for the sake of videos and things like that. So... Okay, so the way, the truth, of life. I need to do this without. Um, messing up since we're stamping. Yes, doodling. Doodle, yes, doodling in my Bible helps me remember things in there. Just helps me connect. And I've got like prayers documented in there. I've got study notes, all kinds of things like that. I'm going to use some Versafine Onyx Black ink to stamp with. This is my favorite because it is very crisp and black. And I try to be fairly straight and fairly in the center. And I'm going to halfway clean these and then clean them better after. Um, who's the distressed ink color matcher artist? You mentioned it in a previous video that blends colors. Distressed ink color matcher. I'm not sure who is the distressed ink color matcher. matcher. Distressed ink color matcher. Um, I just said I think just in general card makers do a good job of blending colors together. I don't know what you mean by distressed ink color matcher. Thanks. Welcome to the party. So that's a little crooked and I'm okay with that. I must have missed a question about adhesive. Um, I mentioned Sandy Allnock for doing ironing her pages. She does Bible journaling pages on her channel. The way. Have many grandkids and after worshiping in my Bible someday they'll pass down. That's awesome, Lenora. Yeah, these are great legacy. I started them out as legacy Bibles and now I just have so many that I just write whatever in there and my boys will get to read it one day and there will be plenty for everybody. <laughs> From the Raise a Hallelujah entry video. Oh, plus corporation glue tape. Thank you, Blenda. I'll have to check that out. Way the truth of life, right? Life. Um, raise a hallelujah. Remind me which kit raise a hallelujah is. Is I know that sounds horrible, but you guys, I have literally done. <laughs> I can't even tell you how many kits. I'll have to go back. And I'll have to respond to your question because I'll have to go back and look and see. Raise a hallelujah. So stamping on live is always super boring. Sorry about that. And while I like the style of these stamps, these cling ones, the cling is not very good. You can see some of these have never even been used and the cling is already not really wanting to cling. Oh, thanks. Thank you for subscribing. Welcome, welcome, welcome. 
I think I'm going to try to do a live once a month at least is going to be my goal for 2020. So we can hang out, ask questions. Okay. Oh, there you go, Lenora. See, I don't have all that yet. So you've got plenty of, you've got plenty of beautiful Bibles to go around. Okay. And I'm going to use typed alpha for the I know when I first started, I was very like particular about my pages and how they were done and what they looked like and that I didn't mess anything up. And now like eight Bibles in, I don't even stress about it. <laughs> I know my, my kids might not enjoy it either because they everybody has to be quiet in my house while I'm doing this. Make that kiss so I know there was so, so many. I had the, I had a plan to do like a advent roundup to show everybody everything. Um, part of that I got sick and then part of it, the kits didn't really get to me until kind of later in the month. And so it was already kind of late then to tell you guys about them to get them, if that makes sense. So I ended up not doing that, but there were lots and lots and lots. You just kind of had to go through and pick which one style wise and topic was gonna work for you for advent. It was a song and you journaled, journaled it with By the Will for God praise hand stamp, but I couldn't catch the name of the person when you blended the... Oh, yes. Okay. So that's the one that's like greens and blues and the name of the person when you blended the distressing color. Um, Christina Warner. It's Christina Warner and um, I think it's Kay Warner Designs on YouTube. If you look at the bottom of the description of that video, I think I linked her in that description. Christina Warner. I know what you're talking about now. Really cool stamping. You can make your own design. Yes, I love to stamp. So it's okay if it's a little bit crooked. I'm not going to stress about it. And honestly, these fonts probably don't perfectly match the style of the watercolor, but that's okay. I like to kind of mix and match um, like a softer look with big and bold. And so I think this will work. like that and then I'm gonna outline actually let's see I just stuck my finger in paint I think I'm gonna outline this in black what do we think I'm gonna did you guys watch no you haven't watched it because it hasn't gone on my channel yet there's a really awesome video coming I think on Thursday or Friday <laughs> so don't miss that but I added some black ink to the edges of some things and I think I'm gonna do the same thing for this Aw, oh, thanks, Joe. I, I've been trying to mix in talking about the material a little bit more. It's just hard to keep up with all of them and the study for all of them. So, alpha stamping over the stickers. Yep, Lenora, stickers are easier sometimes. Okay, so yay or nay, this is the fun of live. You guys get to vote. Do I want to ink up the edges of this so that it's black, so it kind of stands out? or leave it like that. Bye, thanks for joining us. I think black will make it, yeah, I think it'll make it pop too. I'm just trying to decide, is that the look I'm wanting? Because there isn't really any black anywhere else. I mean, I guess I could order or do some splatter on here. Yes, 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 ink it. Okay, we're gonna ink it. And if it looks like junk, then I can always, after the live, redo one. So I'm just taking a small ink pad and just rubbing it along the edge of this. Yes, with the black. All right, we're going. Yeah, I was gonna outline it at first too, but I kind of felt like this needed something on it. And there's a really awesome video. Oop, I got a little crazy, but that's okay. Coming later this week for Open Journey. I love how the florals came out in that one. And I do play with some watercolor in that one too. So that's all queued up and ready for you guys while I'm gone. How does that look? Yep, I think that works. And of course, black splatters. I know I was going to do gold splatters, but I kind of think we need black splatters now to tie in the black from here. 
See, that girl knows me. Yes, Ashley. She obviously has watched some of my videos. If she's talking about black splatters because that's my jam. Okay, so I think this is a black that's in here. And this is where we get messy. Oh yeah, good choice. See, splatters always make everything 10 million times better. Not getting too carried away. Just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, Lindsay splatters. It can't do a live video without Lindsay splatters on so you can actively see the mess that it does on my desk when I do it. Get rid of that. Try not to stick my hand in anything. All right, you guys are gonna have to hear the dryer just one more time so I can dry all that before I stick that down and we're just about done. I'll underline my verse. What do you do when you draw a blanket on devotion? Joe, I just don't do it. Um, and I know, I know that sounds like a really simple answer, but it, you, when I first started, I would try to journal every single prompt in the devotion, every page, every day, every question, every verse. Um, and over time, I just found that sometimes I just don't connect with the devotional content or that question for the day or whatever verse it is. Um, and it's okay to go, you know what? I'm gonna read this, I'm gonna read the verse, but it doesn't have to go into my Bible. And I know that takes a little bit of, like if you're a control freak like me, <laughs> it's a little bit difficult to walk away and go, oh, it's, I don't have that complete devotional in my Bible, but it's okay, it's okay. You do not have to do every single page of a devotional. <laughs> I know, me too, Lenora. Yes, you are right. Once you get like the baseline products that you enjoy, so whether that be acrylic paints or scrapbooking or watercolor, once you do that and kind of get what you want, then you're not shopping as much. You're right. I don't shop, ugh, I smeared that, nearly as much as I used to. That's why I'm dreading doing my taxes next year because I do not have enough tax write-offs from this year because I did not buy enough. Pop dots, you know, I was thinking about pop dots, but um, I don't want to be able to see underneath where my messy watercolor is in that line. I am going to cut off this edge over here. So you can see I kind of scooted it over that way, I'm not covering the text. And I can still read all the text underneath this watercolor. It might be difficult to see on camera, but I can still see it. Yeah, I think the inking around the edge was a definite good decision. I'm not going to add a tab on here. You could. I'm trying to get away from tabbing every single entry because it's just, that's the part of my Bible that gets fluffy super fast. And then I have to move out of that Bible sooner than I want to because it's gotten so fluffy. Thanks. Let's underline. Actually, I'll probably just highlight the verse real quick and it was John 14 it's like 6 and 7 right down here and I'm just using a brush marker and a light blue to highlight that and I could go in here and journal and add notes but I've journaled this verse 5,000 times in every single bible and I've done prayers I've done note taking so I don't need to do it every single time it's okay I think that we kind of have to let go sometimes with the rules <laughs> when we're Bible journaling. I know we're all kind of afraid of messing up our Bibles. Um, and I know that kind of comes with time. Over time, you get looser and more comfortable messing things up and not being perfect. But I think you're going to enjoy it a lot more if you get past some of the trying to have it, you know, every single entry perfect and just right. Thanks. It was so fun having the extra people on my channel. Yep, I am a definite control freak. Okay, so any questions? We're at an hour and 20. So let's go for just a couple more minutes. I'll answer some questions and we'll call it good. Thanks. Yeah, I think it looks, it doesn't need anything extra. If I wanted to, I could have shifted everything up and then had some more room to journal. But so if that's how you want to do it, definitely do it that way. I kind of thought about maybe doing like a little cluster down here and then my title and the cluster up here and then having the center to journal in. So you can take this design and then, you know, do whatever layout that you want with it. Thank you. Thanks. I'm so glad that you guys joined me. Oh, 
Uh, it is all him, 100%. The talent is from him. And honestly, there were m multiple moments that I did not tell you guys through this that I was panicking that it looked horrible. So like I said, with watercolor, it really takes coming all the way to the end um, for it to come together and <laughs> look good. Joe, what's my absolute favorite medium? Watercolors are definitely um, a passion and fun for me. And I did a lot more of it when I didn't have as many kits to journal for you guys. When it was just, you know, one or two companies, I had more time to play with things like watercolor. Because you can see, an hour and 20 minutes just to do this is a long time. Um, but now I really like playing just with scrapbooking. Just lots of die cuts and paper pieces. And then maybe a little ink smushing in the background. And then just building up paper and stuff like that. Because it's faster and easier. Thanks. I'm Belinda. I'm going to try to do once a month. So, and I'll start setting them up as a schedule on my YouTube channel. So you can see when they're coming ahead of time and be able to set reminders and all that kind of thing. So you'll be able to see them more often. Um, my favorite watercolors, Ashley, I, at the very beginning of this video, go back. Cause I talk all about comparing different kinds of watercolors. Um, and the ones that I kind of reach for these ones from Prima, which is art philosophy now. So you might see either or branding, but these are kind of my go-to that I reach for. Daniel Smith are my hands down favorite, but they're super expensive. So um, those I'm going to have to add like one tube at a time into my stash. Uh, absolute favorite Devo was, um, let me see if I can grab the notebook that I did. Hold on one second. Okay, this was probably my hands down favorite devotional of all time so far. Uh, it was Rise Up. This one was done by, oh, I can't remember her name now. How horrible is that? And she's not even really on Instagram anymore, um, Bible journaling anymore. But this was an old, old, old illustrated faith kit. Um, I think that I have multiple videos on my channel for this one. And I did something totally different and did these like vellum tip-in inserts. And so I explored with different mediums on vellum, like gelatos and um, like coloring from the backside. I think this is distress inks. So I played with a whole bunch of different mediums, but I also really liked the devotional content. I hate to tell you guys that this is my favorite because you can't get it anymore. This is one of the older ones that's not available anywhere anymore. Um, it just depends on what you're looking for and what speaks to you. I think everybody has different content that speaks to them. Um, so, you know, a favorite for me might not be a favorite for you because you're in a different season of life. So, um, that's why when I do my unboxings now, I really try to make a point of talking about what the devotional content is about. Um, that way, you know, you can look past the cuteness factor of it and look at the devotional content and see what, what speaks to you. Thanks. I, Ashley, we'll probably do lots of watercoloring in these lives because that's usually what the most asked for is. Um, and books, I don't read a whole lot other than like fiction stuff. I don't read a whole lot of um, spiritual stuff other than devotionals. Yeah, Rise Up was so, so good. So good. Yes, Lenora, you rocked holy, holy, holy. I did not get to work all the way through that one. I have lots recently that I haven't worked all the way through. Uh, thank you. Thanks. All right. Any other last minute questions? Thank you. Thanks for the safe travels. Yes. So prayers for safe travels. We are leaving. We're getting up at 1230 and we are leaving at 230 <laughs> to get to the airport and we'll be flying all morning. And then I have a video scheduled to go up later this week. And then that's the only one that I got done ahead of time. I was trying to do one more today, but I don't think it'll get done. So there will just be the one video this week. All right, friends. Well, I'm going to go ahead and sign off and uh, stay tuned. I will set up some future lives and we'll definitely get to hang out more and do some more painting and things like that. So I hope everybody has a wonderful week. You know me, I will be popping on over on my Instagram um, at lindsaydecor413. If you're not following me over there, um, please go follow me because I'm trying to push to get to 10,000 and I know it is not all about 
follower count. I get that. And I don't care about that. What I care about is being able to add links into my stories for you guys. <laughs> so once you hit 10,000 subscribers, you can add links. So when I talk about products or talk about things, talk about a video, I can directly link to the video from my Instagram story. So it's easier for you guys to find. So I think that I'm at 9,600. So 400 of you could go <laughs> over and subscribe to Instagram. That would be awesome. <laughs> It was so much fun. It was so much fun to get to hang out with you and see so many familiar faces. I see lots of you guys popping into my comments and my DMs. Um, I love that you guys are active like that. I know I don't always get a chance to one-on-one -on -one talk to you guys. Sometimes you just get a little heart or a little like from me, but that means that I did see your comment. I am reading them. I just don't get a chance all the time to answer all, all of them or, you know, write specifically to everybody. So, all right, so let's go ahead and end it. And I hope you guys have a wonderful week. We'll talk to you guys later.